So Lela ji, welcome, welcome, and thank you so much for uh, you know agreeing to talk to me um, on this. I don't know. I mean, I've forgotten if it's Tuesday or Monday or Sunday or each day has now merged into the other. Yes, so, absolutely. Uh, one doesn't know what it is, and as I wrote somewhere, one doesn't know whether it's a holiday or every oh, no, day is a no. holiday or no holiday at <laughs> all. Well, yeah, when is one supposed to stop working and start working? <laughs> and actually the calls and messages and all continue all through the night because nobody knows what the routine is the last two years so i was hoping the third year would be the same was all about this time of the year was about planning for the exhibit you know the daskar exhibition in singapore mm-hmm. figuring out the sarees and get you know last time i think by this time if i'm not mistaken we were here the exhibit was already yeah happened. we were here i think it was last i think it was the last day and we yeah, were sitting yeah. in your uh, lovely flat and you know with all our parcels and getting ready and you and sonal were talking up the figures and figures and, and you know and people were calling up ki humne miss kar diya exhibition we but you do want a sari so it, it you know and, and the artisans are all there and the embroidery workshops and it is just a wonderful wonderful time of our lives Sona was getting very frantic because you were wanting to open packages and take out sarees, <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway, and we are uh, sad not yeah. to be here and not to be there, and for obviously a very terrible reason. But what to do? It's 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 horrible, and and I, you know, I I get calls from crafts people that, "Yeah, what are you going to do?" And I'm like, I don't know. I really don't know when things will be allowed and. Um, the predictability is so low at this point of time that it I, is also i mean what makes it all the more frustrating and difficult because we can't promise artisans anything because we don't know when i mean we are sitting today on the 27th we are supposed to be we were supposed to be relaxing the thing on the 3rd now it doesn't look as if that's going to happen and uh, until we relax that and obviously there's is going to be quite some time before we can organize any kind of bazaars or exhibitions and uh, you know even for craft people to get an order and process it is not happening now in fact all their orders are being cancelled from everywhere the people who are saying that they're sitting on stacks and stacks of stock which is was supposed to be ship given to various parties and which those people are now writing to say that um, sorry so you know i, I think I, the whole scenario is going to be very very different i um, have been meaning to ask you very specific questions about and one is hearing a yeah. lot about the distress of the craft sector hmm. and i'm trying to figure out from you because you obviously work so closely with the craft sector that what does this distress mean in real terms because for me one immediate distress is there is two months there's been no economic activity and yeah. these are people with very low savings and stuff so the, the immediate problem of aaj ka khana today's food and yeah. i mean that is everything. the immediate that problem is starting point that's the immediate problem that they literally here. many of them don't have food because the government schemes haven't really relief hasn't kicked in particularly in rural areas and also because craft people themselves fall through this net because they're not really looked at as below the poverty line or as migrant or daily workers and things and nobody quite knows where to position them so none of the schemes really uh, work for them and yet even the quite successful craft people are supporting a lot of very poor workers and you know small uh producers and who work for them on daily wages actually but only as they work so and they, there's no work to give them there's no raw material i mean shamji bai was one of the biggest weavers in in kashmir in, in kach even he's got to the point he says we finished all the raw material that we had in fact a lot of it was waste it was not we didn't want to use it because it was not Uh, the best quality but we've given it out because people want work so now there's no raw material and actually we don't even have the money to pay wages to all these people and then you look at it from the other spectrum where uh, you can feel a little angry and upset that 
very big uh, sort of chains are cancelling orders. But on the other hand, what are they supposed to do also? Because if their shops and things are closed and have been closed for the last six weeks or so and are likely to be closed for another at least a month, where do they sell these things? How do they generate? They still have to pay huge rentals. Again, Tarun Tahliani, one of the biggest designers, one most successful, he's saying, you know, we can go for another month or so. But if we are going to pay for all these stores in, you know, the most expensive parts of Delhi and Bombay and whatever, plus we have to pay our staff, which is a commitment, plus we have to pay the Karigas who are employed full time with us, then what happens? And already, uh, you know, three of the younger designers have uh, talked to me and said that they are really closing their companies and they're shutting down because mm. they're not going to be able to do it. No one has that kind of liquidity. Especially in a two, three months yeah. with no end in sight. I mean, it's not that at and the end of the Obviously, the banks are not lending. No one is doing anything. And then when it all opens out, I mean, I think that both the international market and the Indian market are going to be a very changed space because uh, craft is not really an essential item that people are going to rush out and buy, you know. People, when they're, a lot of people, you know, when they, when one messages and things or on Facebook, they're saying, what is the first thing that you're going to buy? Or what is the first thing you're going to do? I've not heard anyone saying, I'm going to rush out and buy a sari, or I'm going to go and buy some, you know, sort of bidri uh, or dhokra or whatever. I think it's going to be quite a time. Everyone's pockets are going to be pretty empty. It's not just craftspeople. And uh, so we have yeah. to somehow build up this market again. So, so tell me this. So usually, um, this is what, April and then there's May coming up. So May, June, July are not hot selling months as far as craft mm -hmm. is concerned, yeah. right? Things start picking up maybe what, mid-August. Yeah. Right? And then, of course, it peaks in Diwali, this, uh, this December in, in Singapore. There's also Chinese mm -hmm. New Year and stuff. So given that, given that, but the grace of God, at least so far, those times have not been affected. This is a time where the manufacture, where the production happens or the making happens. Mm -hmm. So if, let's say, there is a partial release of lockdown and the raw material starts flowing, you know, mm -hmm. let's say, in the next two weeks, do you think that things... There's a, there's a good chance of things coming back to at least 30 or 40 percent of where they were or do you think there's such a big liquidity thing that even if raw material is now available people won't be able to buy it I mean, how does it work i mean how do you well, i don't think craftspeople people are going to buy it even if raw material was there which is why that's one part of our daskar um, appeal support fund that it will go to craftspeople people to help them buy raw material and prepare for the bazaars and exhibitions uh, but I am equally concerned about the fact that even if, I mean, our first bazaar was scheduled, I think, in July in Bangalore. And then after that, we had a series of things. We lost two bazaars. We lost the... We lost Bonanza two, right? Bazaar. March. March and one, I was an abridged bazaar. We lost summer, the summer bazaar, which is a very big one. So we lost two there. We obviously are not doing our weekend bazaars, uh, weekend uh, exhibitions now. And uh, in July, August, even if things are such that we can open up and things, I mean, my concern is that craft people will, of course, come. They'll have a mixture of what they have with them and some new products and things. But are the customers really going to come? I mean, first of all, is social behavior going to change? where people are really not wanting to go out into public places? Are they going to be keen on buying, as I said, is craft the thing that they will go out to, to buy? All that is a big question mark. So I think the trust really has to so, be to try and get some kinds of confirmed orders for craftspeople. Uh, apart from these kind of retail sales. How's the e-commerce? I mean, I, I, I know a lot of e-commerce sites are actually shut down for now. I mean, I, whenever I go to them, they say there is nothing happening. Our warehouses are closed. 
since so when things open up do you think deal with the first to kind of be okay because they are not a brick and mortar i think e marketing is also. obviously the thing it's not something that naturally i think is a great place for craft because i think absolutely craft is completely touch and feel yeah. particularly fabrics and things like that but i think it's obvious that in this new world where people are confined to their homes and want to stay and uh, that uh, this is an area that one just simply has to explore it's certainly one but, of the areas which daskar is now sort of thinking quite actively you know, when i when i see daskar when i go to daskar bazaar the one big chunk of what happens is the like the the, the big fish so so to speak they come and buy large quantities and mm. so in your opinion that will be hit because if if you're saying you know even tarun tahiliani is saying we can't continue this way for too long then mm. that is not going to come back in the next 4 5 months at least maybe by next year by 2021 maybe i certainly But think that this year, year you can more or less wipe out it really i think the designers are of course big buyers but i think more than that are the sort of the boutique owners and the retailers from other towns you know the sort of uh, uh, towns like chandigarh and ludhiana and nagpur and all who now come ambala who come and buy in bulk and then have their own little boutiques now what has happened to that business i don't know those people are mainly housewives who are doing it as a kind of secondary thing it could be that they might start up better because their overheads are less and uh, so it really depends to be seen what how that all works i think the design community is going to be very hit because for one thing the kind of merchandise that they used to make is made for a kind of luxury lifestyle in a very social lifestyle which again is something that's not happening i mean people are not throwing parties where they're wearing designer gowns they're not these big weddings and things are of course they're banned at the moment but i think even when it opens out i don't see people you know immediately, immediately absolutely yeah, plunging yeah, into yeah. it so that a thing i think is going to be very tough but it depends i mean i don't know it may be as happened in 2008 after the recession during the recession that people actually came back to crafts because it was cheaper it was more accessible you know that whole uh, people felt that well, if you're going to buy something you might as well buy you know a sort of hand block top rather than go and to buy a sort of branded piece i mean it will be interesting to see Same but i do yeah. think that the merchandise has to be different also and the whole look and feel of craft has to be in one side more functional less of a luxury item and on the other hand a little more contemporary and interesting to young people and but then you know. that's not going to happen in 6 months right i mean these guys have been you know what I, i how happen at the designers maybe maybe this is given all of us including the sky a little more leisure because instead of being caught between preparing for one event and another and that's what craft people used to do they used to make things for one bazaar and the next month you know they would be making it for the next they didn't really have time for design development for thinking and i mean since we have to be optimistic i'm just hoping that this time has given them a little thinking time we've been speaking and writing and uh, sort of whatsapping them all the time and trying to prepare them for the fact that yeah you we need to do something a little different now it's no no craft sector of course is an important one very important part of the sector for the craft people the next of course are the ngos and the cooperatives and everybody who you yeah. know kind of are very very important between the market and the craft space but they are also hit very badly and i mean mm. daskar you said has lost two bazaars you know we don't even know the july bazaar is going to happen how you know the how the lockdowns going again no predictability there so how are how are 
how is that part of the sector coping and how are you coping <laughs> for instance how i mean how because you well, know i there i don't know are you provoking me to burst into tears <laughs> oh my god well i i i just feel no one talks well it is it them. is of course very very worrying particularly when they are organization i mean for instance daskar as you know is entirely dependent on dependent the dependent on the bazaars yeah to our, well to our bazaars and to our consultancies and whatever services we provide now none of that is happening uh it is uh, not only worrying but actually quite scary uh, but uh, i mean we have again very few reserves we can go on for a couple of months but what happens then and once again it's this scenario that whether it's international funding agencies whether it's uh, uh, you know sort of schemes and things if uh, sort of csr everyone has been so badly hit no one is looking no really one. for the cause to i'm actually very touched that you know it's just private people concerned people who have responded to our appeal and uh, except for one uh, corporate funder uh, there's any i mean he, no he's not a corporate so much as a sort of small a personal private company has actually contributed everyone else as well and the fact that we have managed to put together funds which enable us to distribute relief to craft people all over india is very moving because i know it is people who themselves are quite strapped for money and uh, but uh, it can't go on like this and of course we daska cannot use the funds that we have got as donations to support ourselves uh, so we have clearly said that this is going to go all of it 100% of it to craft to craft communities so so if if somebody was to come to you and say you know i mean and given and say come to you today with zero idea of what's going to happen in the next 6 to 12 months let's say and says what do you think should be done i mean for the sector and i and i include the sector i say craft people this one one you know section of that sector and then the ngos and the corporates without you know without whom this the sector will again not work because it's it's if it's just the crafts person and the market you know don't make it work there has to be the very important uh, middle layer of the ngos designers and corporates and so what do you what what do you say what do you say captain so the first thing obviously is that the craft sector has to be included uh, i mean the bottom layer of craft people have to be included into uh, the various government relief schemes for people who fall below a certain salary income and the kind of schemes which at the moment have just started i think for people who are daily worker daily wages and things and it should be recognized that class people do also come into the same category so that is the one thing the other thing is that uh, a very large number of class people who are not daily wages but he small entrepreneurs uh, artisan who have their own little family businesses and things so they'll be self employed right and that's their yeah, self employed they should be given uh, the access to the funds which are there for medium and small industries so here they neither they saw that and at this point to expect them to be supported either by themselves or by ngos like daskar to uh, sort of build up production to continue work uh, over these months where there's no market is very unrealistic and if you don't want them to completely go under and go back to manual labor whatever or to manrega schemes then you have to make capital available to them and it has to be very easy and accessible and if you can do that then as we were saying earlier craft people are quite resilient they have the skill they have a sort of they are fairly business savvy i think they could get going and uh, so that is very very important and then yes i absolutely love your point about the fact that they all need this bridge in between which is 
what the ska started to be. Also, I think that it would be wonderful if there was a recognition of how important, particularly at times like this, organizations like the Daska and Ram Sutra and Seva and Sasha and all are as a kind of bridge between craftspeople and their markets and that they need us more than ever in this kind of situation and that we cannot manage unless we are funded by somebody for some period of time. Things I, I was thinking that maybe that is what it is. You know, the, it is going to be a wipeout, yeah, maybe, maybe not, but that, resurrection will happen. How, we yeah. don't know, but uh, that's what it yes, is. I think uh, I absolutely agree with you that craftspeople are extraordinary and they have in their hands the tools and the hands and their heads, the tools to remake themselves. But they do need a heavy hand. Absolutely. And they, at this point, in, they have between demonetization and GST, GST and whatever, they have really suffered already in the last five, six years. And this has been a blow. And as I said, it's not just a question of them, but there has to be the, the market has also had has a huge that. hit, which is going to affect it, the, inter, the global market as well as the Indian market. So I do think that people have to come together and uh, that governments also have to realize and they can't keep saying that craftspeople are very resilient because there's a limit to everyone's resilience. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think... And that's it. I mean, I mean, people like us, I guess, we're also waiting that the moment we can you know, start any form of economic activity, we can start selling again. And uh, because ultimately, I think that is key. Things have to sell. People have to buy things. People have to realize. And I think people already do. I mean, I, you, you've come twice to uh, Singapore and you see that handloom, etc. Has, has, has a remarkable um, appeal. So then that has to come back again. And you're right that, you know, people probably will be wearing less fancy saris. I mean, all the things that could have happened, for example, in these last two months have not happened. People have not bought saris, right? I mean, there's no holy party to go to yeah. or no whatever has. So, and, and, and this is lost income. This is not going to be made up because it's not that people, when things, you know, get back to normal, are going to buy double to make up for this. So this is lost income. So we have to realize yeah. that. And, you know, uh, it's, this is not coming back. So we have to do a lot to then make sure that this year is not a complete wipeout for these uh, craftspeople. So, um, and I, really, I, I, I don't have any answers now because I just don't know when we things are to, opening we up. We have to put pressure. We have to put pressure. We have to put pressure, absolutely. On, on the government. Because the government is the only person who can really bail us out at this point. And I think that they have to realize that they have to do that, not only for craftspeople, but or and NGOs like the Skull, but also for the small uh, sort of retailers who used to be the ones who sold craft sold. textile. So. On this note, let us, I've taken a lot of your time. Thank you so much. I had said half an hour. I think it's gone all the way about 45 minutes. I'm going to put, of course, the donation links on this page and if something come out of that. And uh, let's Just hope that things come back to normal fast. Absolutely. And we are and, looking... Uh, we can all Looking forward to again. Singapore 2021. Yes, oh God. Absolutely. Thank you so much.